Okay. I right, found my new back. This time I've got the recording going. Nice. <laughs> Oh, yeah, people are early. Yeah. Oh, Skeletor! Hey, everybody. It's 8 o'clock on a Friday night. That means it's time for solitary confinement. And it's time for the nightly howl. Howl with me. Okay, we did it. <laughs> That's enough of that. That's enough of that. That's enough. Yep. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, I know the howl is supposed to be supporting all like the medical workers, awesome job medical workers, but mostly I'm just like going nuts inside my house. So that's why we all have our new fabulous backgrounds to signify where we would rather be. So James, where are you? Uh, I am on a secluded island with enough uh, booze to keep me uh, not thirsty. Okay, so you're spending your solitary confinement on a solitary island. Yeah, it helps with the whole social distancing to imagine it's a place I'd rather be <laughs> than, you know, the couch. <laughs> yeah. Or the sunroom, whatever the case may be. Yeah, whichever. Oh, then we've got He-Man too. Ron, he's making oh. you look bad. <laughs> I, 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 I saw that James had a skeleton on, so I didn't. Yeah, no, I, I, I had to switch out the uh, Skeletor for a second there. Right. I got, so, got He-Man with a rainbow. I know. That's like a quite a statement about He-Man there. I think his clothes are not a are statement as much more of a confirmation of fact. Yeah, I mean, his clothes are the statement. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that haircut what? is a fucking statement. Yeah. He's got the same hairstyle that's as Dia. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'd rather be in He-Man's Embrace right now. That's where I... Oh. Mm -hmm. Can you read my mind? <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I think I'm wallowing in the midst of destruction right now because I'm hanging out with Godzilla. Nice! Yeah, Ooh. yeah. I think that's actually probably what I'm going to look like after three or four weeks without leaving the house and unlimited access to constant food. Yeah, that's pretty much the route I'm going down. <laughs> but Dia, you look like you're ready for an adventure. Hola, soy Dora. <laughs> that's Spanish for let's go. <laughs> she disappeared in the grass. That means be careful. <sighs> You, now, you don't have monkeys there, though, do you? No. No, no but monkey. Swiper might show up. So, uh, fair enough. Is, is that what you're calling your boyfriend now? <laughs> yeah, I feel like she was excited Swiper. about Swiper showing up. Like, that looked like a really positive part of the evening right there. Yeah, like the Swiper, Swiper. no swiping thing sounds no swiping. like part of a pre-negotiated kink thing at this point. <laughs> Evans to Murgatroyd. It's like you can swipe, it's full consensual swiping. Like swiping, if you need to swipe, like that's on you. And I'm swipe okay. Swipe right. With there you go. Swipe <laughs> right. <laughs> you just remember you have to say it three times. Swipe or no swiping. And then at the end, you have to say, oh man. Fair enough. Like, uh, <laughs> is, is that like the safe word? The, oh man. <laughs> oh man, that's what Swiper says. You tell him not to swipe. And he's, oh man. Fair enough. <laughs> like he didn't see it coming. Like he didn't see. He's like, we told you three times. Like what? It's like kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, thank you very much for our audience that's joining us both here on our live broadcast and on YouTube Live. To give you an idea of some of the things we're going to be going into today, as well as our fabulous on location sets, is uh, we're going to play a little game called Two Facts and One Lie where we're going to say three statements and y'all will have to guess which ones are true and which one's the lie. 
then we're going to do a little bit of uh, true confessions about, you know, some of us might have been breaking quarantine. So I definitely have a story about that I want to share with you. But first, let's talk about some real news that you can use. So the news now. <laughs> there we go. The newsy voice is even newsier than mine, Ron. <laughs> that is a newsy voice. It is a newsy voice for sure. So I think we've gotten one of the most important uh, messages come out of the White House this week. Uh, Trump is actually considering pardoning Joe Exotic, the Tiger King. Really? Um, yeah. That's totally his speed, I'm telling you. Yeah, look, we have a special guest behind James. It's Joe Exotic himself. No, well, it's the best we could do with him being in prison and all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because I wasn't going to spend any time on a county jail phone line waiting to get a get a connection, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, this is true. This is totally true. It came out in, uh, they were doing a White House, you know, newsy thing like they normally do. Uh, I actually got this story not only from my morning news, but from the LA Times. So it's not fake news that it, he they said he was kind of joking about it, that yeah, maybe he would, you know look into pardoning Joe Exotic, but you know what? I think he's going to do it because let's face it, those two have like a lot in common. Uh, number one, he's uh, famous and we know Trump totally respects people who are famous. And uh, I don't think Trump does a whole lot of math, but uh, <laughs> he might be a little bit of a predator. Uh, well, and, and we did find somebody it. with like the second worst haircut in the United States. So, like, because Trump doesn't want to be beaten at anything, that's his worst haircut. <laughs> that's that's so right. True. That's right. Own your stuff. I have to say, I found I found him kind of endearing. Like, I saw the show this week, and like, definitely, like, I made the mistake of watching it before I went to bed. And anytime someone would email me after I saw the show, I thought they were trying to kill me or get my money. Um, but I don't know. I found I have to say I found I found Joe kind of endearing. Like he just wants to put on a good show, you know. He just want, he's looking for love. He's very lonely. You can't blame him for that. Well, yeah, but you can't blame him for the math. You guys, and... I, this is the reality of the quarantine. This is the worst part of this fucking thing. Is like the child going in and out. Okay, I've had meetings all week. She just comes in. She wants to sit here. Oh my god, I know How a lot of people are doing things, but like, not in a comedy show, you know. Yeah. How many square feet have you got there? Oh, uh, three, four inches. I'm sorry. That was a different question. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't. We, there's no downtime. There's no, like, moment to catch your breath. Like, I, I see all these people being like, oh, my plans for this weekend? Like, just getting rest. Like, fuck off. Like, I haven't had rest since this thing started. No, seriously. Like, how many square feet are your, is your apartment? Like, 700 square oh, feet or something? No, it's like 1,200. Oh, uh, that's not too bad. But we have got 24 people? over here, bitch. 2,400. We have got five bedrooms. We've got rooms we ain't even fucking using. <laughs> hey, we're going to move to Donna's house, babe. <laughs> <laughs> She's back at, Ellie's back at the shore. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we also have some other news. James. Well, um, apparently in Somalia, they are turning to Dr. Hyena to fight depression and mental illness, which is actually something that stems from a longstanding belief in the area um, that hyenas are able to ward off evil spirits that cause the symptoms of mental illness and depression. And uh, really... I can see the allure to all of this because I mean, like, that's pretty much what going to a comedy club was, is go <laughs> look at the chuckling hyena on the stage and feel better about yourself and then go home after, you know, five drinks or whatever the minimum was. I can't really remember anymore. <laughs> five drinks. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, wasn't the dog's name Mugsley on the Great Race? And he would, he had, wasn't he kind of like a hyena with this <laughs> laugh? Do you guys oh, know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Muttley. The... Muttley, Muttley. Mm -hmm. He was like a hyena. No, he was a dog. He was a total dog. A mutt, specifically. 
Yeah, so this is actually the picture that goes along with that story. And the thing that's kind of sad about this is it makes Joe Exotic's zoo look totally luxurious for the animals compared to this, right. this poor hyena. Not to mention, like, that's like the worst waiting room cast off plastic garden furniture that you have to sit there and it looks like there's problem. pieces of that chair on the ground around his feet. I think it is. <laughs> Could you imagine what it looked like when they bought that chair? They were like, yeah, should I get the red or the blue? You know, I, I'm a blue kind of guy. Like, we need something to pop to make the whole room come to life. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then the other question, too, it's like, you know, all of our healthcare professionals have gone to telehealth. Are they offering telehealth appointments with the hyenas now? I, I'd just take a telezoo at this point, you know. Mm. Oh, fireworks, joy. That's perfect for recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like the firecracker that is Ellie, the four-year-old. <laughs> She's kind of like a bomb going off, too. <laughs> Are you a firecracker? And Dia, you got an interesting story this uh, week, too, right? I did, because I'm everything about toilet paper. Apparently, Helsinki, in uh, Finland, they have toilet paper shortages just like us. So this bakery that was having trouble making money, nobody was coming, they decided to make toilet paper cakes. And they actually had to hire more people. So it was a boon to their business, these super cool toilet paper cakes. But I look at them and I just have more questions like, what's inside? Is it red velvet or chocolate? Like, do we have to be worried about what we're seeing on the inside? Is it kind of like you wipe and look and you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Health, anal health. <laughs> <laughs> but would you, would you buy a toilet paper cake? Would that be a thing? Like I'm breaking quarantine to go get me a toilet paper cake because I can't get the real thing. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, like I'd, I'll eat whatever. I mean, I'm a bachelor. Like if it's edible, it's, it's going in my mouth. <laughs> What's your inside? Is it red velvet? Is it chocolate? Is it vanilla? Uh, I'd probably go with the red velvet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's causing me a lot of anxiety with this thing, with the toilet paper thing, and then even like a cake, like to your point, is it red inside or, or chocolate? I once heard a comic, uh, like years ago, he did a bit about, like he was actually in Boulder, he did a bit about, he's like, how do blind people know? He's like, I never trusted a number. <laughs> Work okay. It out, Work it out. How do people, know, how do blind people know when they're done? True. You can't I can ask feel my things, mom. you know, just because you're, you're blind doesn't mean that you can't feel what your body's doing. You go, you go purely based on feeling? Like you don't look to see when it's done? Oh, like, like to inspect your work. Ah, I see what you mean. Is it trophy worthy? No, 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 no. It, it's, wait, I'm, no, wait, sorry. We got to, we got to work. No, he, he's, he's asking, how do you know when you're done wiping or oh, not? Oh. Yeah, I was like, wait. Because he has to do this whole wrong. thing. I think I taught my child wrong. Like, <laughs> when I first started wiping my butt by myself, but when I started, when I, I did not very like it when I wiped by myself, so I helped my dad and mom. <laughs> Excuse me. Mommy and daddy helped you. You didn't help them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be very clear about that statement because we oh, do well, not want so child protective services here. Yeah, I love this. Right. <laughs> this is my sidekick. Oh, but I think one of the most important parts of this story that we all missed is that this is in Finland, so it's not just crazy ass Americans buying up all the toilet paper this is a global effect of the pandemic that everybody is buying up all the toilet paper right I, I guess we'll just have to figure out how to do the the whole three seashells thing so that like it makes sense at this point <laughs> no target i was at target this week and they had some the three seashells? <laughs> no, not the three seashells. <laughs> Nothing. What's up with the three seashells? No, they had like toilet paper. They had like full on toilet paper. I felt good about life for a minute. Huh. And then and then I got scared that someone was gonna breathe on me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
All right, cool. So that's all the news that we thought was newsworthy for this week. So let's dive into our fun little game of two facts and one lie. And whose is up first? I guess I can start it off on things like... Um, so everybody know how the game works? We all clear? Well, why don't you cover the rules for our audience there? Well, this is Dia's game. Dia, tell us how this works. Okay, you're going to say two truths and one lie, and we uh -huh. all have to figure out which is the lie. And I would love if our audience would perhaps participate in this. And there's a chat button at the bottom, and you can chat out your vote as to which one is the lie. Our goal is to trick you. So let's see what happens. Uh, all right. So uh, number one, uh, the first time I was on stage for a play was in 1987. I, uh, number two, um, I've been playing musical instruments since about eight years old with the piano to start off with. And lastly, I work at a, um, I have worked as a special effects uh, coordinator for film before. And I, in case you forgot what James said, I'm writing him down right here. And then Dia wrote down the FX coordinator as well. Yep. So I can't vote because I know. <laughs> yeah, like I, I can't hide anything from my mom. Like, first it was porn, now this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and that's I wrote story. down my vote. Okay, Ron thinks it was the FX coordinator as well. So, which one's the lie, James? Uh, the, the lie actually is the musical instruments at eight. Like I've done special effects for film before. Um, I was a makeup artist at a local costume shop here in Denver. Um, but the musical instruments, I didn't really start learning until I was like 10 or so, you know, late bloomer. <laughs> nice. That was a good, that was, that's how the game is played, James. Good job. <laughs> All right, Dia. You're up next. Okay, two truths, one lie. Number one, I don't have popcorn in my pantry. Number two, I have two 20 plus pound frozen turkeys in my freezer. And number three, I have to use a kitchen timer to remind myself to eat. Hmm. I'm going to go with number one as my vote. Yeah, so you think she does not have popcorn. I think, I think Dia does not use a kitchen timer. I think she eats all the time. <laughs> Ron, what's your vote? Um, yeah, I'm gonna say kitchen timer, for sure. Yeah, she seems like a free spirit. I don't, I don't see her timing things. <laughs> Maybe for like a, maybe for something with Mark, where like the, when she jerks him with like her her, her ankles. <laughs> like I love a, that you're saying all this with your kid on your lap. <laughs> she'll learn it at school. She's publicly educated, right? <laughs> no, no, private school. This much preciousness? No, no, no. Oh, she's then she's school. going to learn much worse things. And Mary hey, from God. the audience is calling you out on the kitchen timer too. Okay. Do you want to know my lie? Yeah. My lie is that I have to use a kitchen timer to remind myself to eat. Bitch, please, I eat all the fucking time. I need a timer to tell myself to stop eating. <laughs> See, I thought it would have been the popcorn because like with the anosmia thing that, you know, you, you can't smell the best part of popcorn. No, the, the hot best butter part, thing. The best part of popcorn is eating the salty buttered popcorn. I'll take your word for it, but I mean, you're missing an entire half of popcorn. <laughs> it's not good. Cool. cool. And I'll go next. Um, I'm kind of 
prepping and writing my uh, stuff here in the the comments. So for my three things, I have a complete collection of all the toys, mint in the box, that they made for Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Mm. Or I actually know who the father is of all three of my kids. <laughs> Or I actually graduated high school early because I had a baby and I was married. Am I allowed to participate in this? <laughs> <laughs> no, James, no. James, you're not allowed to vote. <laughs> you do not have Deep Space Nine, Star Trek, all of it. You do not. Yeah, just Star Wars. Yep, I, I concur. What? Nobody's going to doubt that I know who the father of my kids are. <laughs> James might have doubted that, but no, it's, it, I do know who your dad is. And it's the same guy for all three kids. So, Which is the really surprising thing. I know. I won the <laughs> slut trifecta. Right. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. Yeah, I don't have all of the Deep Space Nine toys. I do have some Star Trek but it's mostly TNG, you know, the next generation, because I do have it for like Picard, but, and Data for some weird ass reason, but. <laughs> it is awesome. Brent Spiner, man, that guy is, that guy should have been America's sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the saddest things about uh, Starfest was getting canceled this season because Brent Spiner was coming out. That sounded that totally awesome. wrong, but hey, he was going to be a out. guest. He was going to be a guest. Okay, yeah, I was like, I thought he was married. Like, but yeah, well, like, even I if it was coming him. out, I would be okay with that because in my heart, I'm a transgender gay man, so that still works with the <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> hey, Donna, did you see Mary also guest Deep Space Nine? Yeah, yeah. People called me out pretty early on that one. Yeah. Okay, Ron, you're the only okay. one left. Okay, all right, so two, two facts and a lie. Okay, so the first one <clears throat> is um, I have a Superman tattoo. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 don't you? Let's see, it's, okay, she, she just, she's just, yeah. He's gonna give it away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one truth, one lie, oh, I guess. That's where we're you gotta at. wait, you gotta wait. Okay, so sorry, okay, take two, here we go. So <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I have a, a picture of Batman on my wall. Uh, I took an amazing, amazing nap this week. <laughs> no, you did. Obsessed with Indian food. What was the last one? I'm obsessed with Indian food. Indian food. Oh, yeah. I know this. I know this. A hundred percent. You I'm not did gonna not. Say it. I'm going to guess last because I know this a hundred percent. Yeah. I would. I would guess that you did not get a nap either. I did. I didn't. I did not get a nap. <laughs> 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 Do you need to run? Like, blink twice for yes. <laughs> hey, can Ellie try one? Do you want to try one? This is terrible. We're like sorting up the storm, and she's like, okay, two, so two, tell us two, and we have to guess two things that are true and one thing that's a lie, and change it up so we. Okay, okay, she's so gonna tell a story and then we'll move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One time I was on the sidewalk running with Jail on the rim, but then I slipped and fell and bumped my nose right in. Stepped in what? <laughs> What'd you step in? I, 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 I slipped and then I, I scraped my nose so bad. Oh, okay. ouch. So that's, that's one story. And I cried so bad. And then what's yeah. another? Tell us another story. Um, so one time I had a bloody knee. Okay. And one then, time you had a bloody knee. Okay, and then a third one. So one time I went to this candy store and had a lot of candy. Oh, <laughs> which one of those is the truth? Which one is a lie? Ooh. I think the first one was the lie because it had too many details. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all it's actually the candy one. Why yeah. are you not taking your child to a candy store, Ron? What kind of a monster are you? Monster. You know what? Because we have a lot of energy 
and we don't need that that crack. We don't need that. I don't need to get her started young. <laughs> she agrees. I don't, you know, she's a, Ellie's a good eater. Mm-hmm. But I do have to say, though, this is a big deal for her. So I want to give her a round of applause because the last show we all did together and Ellie was a part of on the drive home, she, I, got a, I got an earful. She was yelling at me, no, Dada, I thought you were going to bring me up on stage to tell stories. <laughs> <laughs> and one time I yelled at the Indian food and I was like, no, that's Daddy's way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're at the Indian restaurant. She was like two years old. We're at the buffet, and the guy, poor guy, he takes me. He thought I was done. He takes my plate away, and she started screaming her head off at him. All right, we're done. <laughs> All right, so I think you know after we've been in quarantine for a few weeks now and it's starting to wear down on people i i will admit it there's been times when i've gone out and broken quarantine so yeah uh as a matter of fact just even this week i did this so um first and foremost i gotta explain i've got asthma and it kind of developed into bronchitis this week so i've been like not uh firing 100 percent. i do not have corona i don't I don't have any of the other symptoms. You know, it's just all the, you know, I like wheeze and stuff like this. So on Tuesday, our kitchen sink exploded. Like literally the the faucet thing went and we had a fountain of water. So we had to order a new one at Lowe's. But because I have the Lowe's credit card, I had to go in person to go pick it up. And then while we're all out, it's like, oh, let's hit Sam's because we finally have gotten through all of our stockpile of meat in the extra freezer, right? So we get the thing, we're wearing our masks, me and Ryan go, and Ryan actually clocked out so that he could go run this errand at work, which is like, okay, you know, he's like Mr. Serious and Mr. Responsible, so he doesn't ever do that. So we get into Sam's, and he starts going like hell's fire all the way towards the back, towards the meat, and he's like slowly pulling away from me, and I'm like, Ryan, you got to slow down. I can't breathe. And he's all like, well, you wanted to go to the store with me. And I'm like, please, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And it's like, I could just imagine what this was going to turn into where he keeps pulling away and I just kind of collapse into an asthmatic heap right there in the middle of Sam's just, (gasps) and it'd be like, basically somebody dropping a zombie bomb into a populated area and everybody would run screaming out of Sam's. Ah! <laughs> but they didn't. Uh, Ryan just got grumpy with me. But, you know, that's, that's why I had to go break quarantine this week to go terrify people at Sam's Club with my asthmatic wheezing. I'm glad you brought this up because this, this brings up an opportunity to talk about this. I think Ryan's real issue is Achilles heel, if you will, is that he cares too much. Yeah, I think. Well, that he's married to me, did <laughs> but that would make anybody grumpy. <laughs> I don't know. I find you. I find you very suitable. <laughs> suitable? What is she? A pair of sneakers? Yeah, you're a good fit. Black, a button-down blouse. She's suitable. At Stop. fifty, Stop. that's the best you can get. No, but you're so amenable. We were in a situation a few months ago where a car literally came into your office, like crashed into your office, and you had these like really expensive, you had these really expensive Star Wars posters, and I go, Donna, let me go in there, and you're like, no, it's okay, it's fine, don't worry about it. Like, you were like totally even keel about it. There was no issue. So I don't, I, I can't, no, I'm not, I'm not taking, the, I don't think that you're the problem. I'm not saying he's a problem. I'm saying he's very, he's got a big heart. I'm saying you're even keel. You're just staring at me now. <laughs> I don't know if she's gonna like punch me virtually in the nuts or just like move on. I don't know. Same. The, this is why just some cop on your doorknob. Yeah, it's, Ryan is the grumpy Hulk. That's the meanest thing you could do to someone right now is cop on their doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> on their doorknob. Verm warfare. Yeah, verm warfare. <laughs> yeah. So, Ron, my bet was that you have not even broken quarantine. Is that true or not? I mean, I need. To, wait, you said Ron? Yeah. How do you define quarantine? Like leaving your house. <laughs> we, so yeah, we, the first, uh, the first two weeks we didn't like, we, I, I would go out to get groceries or something like the hunter and gatherer that I am. And I'd wear a hazmat suit and I was in heaven. I'm like, I was in heaven wearing gloves and a mask. Like finally it's my time. The chickens are coming home to roost. 
Yeah, and also you can breathe in the, our mask. Yeah, so we were masked now. So we, and we're in an apartment complex. So we uh, were on the fourth floor. So we, this past week, we made a point of going out uh, to ride Ellie's bike and stuff. And, and I, I went today for a race, but I'm going to have um, my favorite tomorrow. It's going to be um, carrot cake, cupcake. And that's my favorite cake in the whole world. Favorite cake in the whole world. So you're going to have it tomorrow because we want to race today. She ran away. But yeah, so we, uh, I did that, but uh, I mean, it's, it's an ordeal. You know, it's, a, it's like a three hour, I actually, this is not funny at all. Like, it's like a three hour ordeal to go to the grocery store. So like, it's just funny. Like, I'm never taking that for granted again. Like next time when, when this thing is lifted, like I'm going to move in. I'm going to move into Whole Foods. <laughs> like I used to complain about, I used to complain about like the thing that scared me was going to Whole Foods and them talking to me. Like, I used to have an issue about that, where they'd be like, oh, sweet potato fries. What are you going to do with those, bro? I was going to eat them. <laughs> now I'm like, yeah. now it's like a whole process. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, uh, people are just like standing out of the way. I, I complimented a guy on the way that he ran out of the way when I came in this week. So yeah, like a very, very tense situation. I can't wait to go back and fear someone talking to me. Not in a Corona way. Right. Right. And Dia, you took like an adventure. Was that yesterday yes i had the worst adventure yesterday i decided to break quarantine and be athletic and go take a walk in the beautiful isolated wilderness and the thing to know about the story about me is i don't like snakes mm. at all and there's a history with me and snakes. So when my daughter was little, like a few months old, I took her on a walk in her stroller and we were almost done with a really long walk and in front of the stroller, a snake came across the path. And this, I'm a new mom and there's nothing more fierce than a new mom. And my reaction to this snake threatening my brand new baby child was to push the stroller towards the snake as I ran the other way. <laughs> Good instincts. <laughs> so that's how much I don't like snakes. Okay, that's, that's your history. So I went out into the wilderness to go on a nature walk with Mark. And as soon as we started on this deserted path, we took four steps in and I always look down when I walk in the wilderness, I, I saw a big fat coiled snake and my butt clenched and my stomach squeezed and I froze and Mark said he knew exactly that something was really wrong and I just went snake and I backpedaled the fuck out of there and it was this huge coiling uh like an arrow head and <laughs> rattle happening it was like holy shit that's a sign from god don't break quarantine. Get back in the house. No workout for you. So I, I came home. <laughs> and, That's and, a pretty intense one there. And that was around Passover too, right? Oh, yes. That was a plague. <laughs> well, I you know, snakes. in my house when we celebrate Easter, because we're like pagans, uh, we believe in the Easter snake because actually that's a very pagan thing and it's like and the easter spider too because they like lay eggs and that's when they start to hatch it's in the spring but you know uh, snakes hibernate poor dia i'm sorry but it's killing it, me <laughs> so that's like literally one of the spring celebrations is when the snakes come out of hibernation and you see them crawling around so like the easter snake we could even call them the passover snake for you no uh-uh no, no. Why are you saying no? That's so nice. Finally, someone subject. accommodates for the Jews. Uh, I, I got to tell you this now. We have to accommodate for Christmas all the time. Finally, Dia is <laughs> letting us, uh, like, she's, she's giving us nachas. <laughs> Look at this. This is the best, the best Easter basket Ryan ever found for me a few years ago. It's a green, so the green screen doesn't want to show. It's an Easter snake. <sighs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. Uh, Dia, you look like you could be 
you could use a rescue from all this snake talk here. <laughs> there it is. Look how cute that is. It's adorable. And he has a rattle. <laughs> <laughs> but that's totally inaccurate. Green snakes do not have rattles. No one cares. I was going to mention that. I was going to mention that. Yeah, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up. But James, you've been breaking quarantine like every other day. That is that is a true fact. Um, I've often broken quarantine because um, I just need, you know, beer or smokes or, you know, something to occupy my goddamn mind while I'm going stir crazy here in the house. Hey, I've been looking at that online. Okay, like um, people doing that. A, a flashlight, by the way, is like seventy bucks. Then that's ridiculous. Just but buy it anyway. on Instagram. Have coupons. Wait, but why it, is that ridiculous? I I think that's perfectly reasonably priced. If you think about like paying for some, like paying for others, I can't say paying for other things. <laughs> see, this is oh, why oh, I don't look have at you on the bridge. <laughs> But but see, I I would also break quarantine for a goddamn Kleinbeck bar at this point. <laughs> what would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> really well played, James. Like that was really good writing. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is break quarantine. <laughs> yep. I would I would I would do anything for a Deanna Troy flashlight right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, nice. Donna, do they make those? Is that a thing? I don't know if they're specific to actual people. It's not like yes, stars. You can sit get your favorite while. star. Like from Star Trek? <laughs> like seven um, of nine? That was an option. Yeah, it's fully functional and anatomically correct. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Wait, why are you Hi, everybody? Well, we are coming up to the end of our time for this week. So uh, next week, we're going to do some exploration into the hashtag with me movement. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what that is, it's like you go, not that, if you go not and check kidding. out like on uh, YouTube, there's a lot of things like cook with me or do yoga with me and stuff like that. And people make some videos. So we're going to have some options for things that we are going to invite people to do with us. Uh, we're going to be looking for more of that news that you can use. And um, I think that's pretty much it. Anything else from uh, all of you guys before we sign off for the night? My butt's itchy. <laughs> I did not need to know that. <laughs> I, I have a koala. That's all. That's not a nice thing to call your kid. <laughs> my, my Dora has evolved and I'm from the Bronx and I'm going to tell you just, you know, whatever. I don't care. But if you're not going to look out, don't look out. But whatever. Cuidado. How did that happen? How did Dora change like that? <laughs> she grew up. Adulting. She saw some reality. Well, I was going to say liberal immigration laws. <laughs> <laughs> that took me a second. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Off. All right. No, I need to shut up before I get in worse trouble. So I'm not going to tell you all to stay safe. I'm going to tell you all to try to stay sane, and we shall see you next week. Wait, are you going to say a Picard thing, though? Say something Picard asked. Oh, right? say, say, make it so. So what? Number exactly. one. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, those are collections Ryan had before we got married, so I don't even know what they are. Uh, I think it's like a lot of Marvel.